The first step of our design project is to import the survey data into our project. This survey data is sourced from a surveyor, whose job it is to pick up and record the existing features out on site and send this data to you, which you'll then import into 12D. We'll be importing survey data from a CSV file. We'll select File, Data Input, XYZ, XYZ General. This panel contains multiple tabs relevant to the import of the data. In this Files tab, we'll select the data file to import. So I'll pick the folder icon and select Browse. Then navigate back to the Getting Started Basic folder. Change the file type that I'm looking for to CSV. Then double click to select the detail survey.csv file. With that file filled out in the file to read field, select the folder icon again, then select open to open the file. We need to determine the format of the data in this file to read it into 12D successfully. So we can see the first column is the point ID, second is the X coordinate, Third is the Y coordinate. Fourth is the Z coordinate or the height. The fifth is the name of the feature that the surveyor picked up that data point as. And the sixth, well, when the surveyor picks up certain features, they can group together multiple points into a string, which is done by using the same number here and indicates that there is a feature that extends for a certain length. For example, a curb, a drain, or the bottom of a channel. So we just need to remember this format for the import of the data. I'll close this CSV file and we'll head into the basic tab. This tab contains settings for the import of the data, which we'll come back to. Uh, we'll move into the format tab. This is where we need to fill out what format the data is in, in the CSV file. I just want to draw your attention to the fact that it's empty at the moment and then move on to the map file. We use a map file to give the data the appropriate properties when imported into the project. For this, we'll use the key name recorded by the surveyor, but more on this in a minute. Lastly, we'll just move into the fencing tab. Using the fencing tab, we can restrict the import of the data to a specific area. Say for example, we have a large area of survey data, but we only need to use a small area portion of it. Now, when we receive data from a surveyor, it's not likely to be the only time we'll receive data with this format from them. Surveyors are usually pretty good in that when they provide you additional data, whether it's for this project or another project, they'll send the data in the same format and using the same key names for certain features. Because this is the case, we can save what is called a parameter file, which essentially saves the customized settings of a particular surveyor and how they give you the data. Usually companies will have these parameter files set up and stored on a network server so that when you do receive data of this format again, you just need to select the relevant parameter file and you'll be good to import. So let's select this parameter file. So again, we'll select the yellow folder icon at the top of the panel and select Browse. Navigate back to Getting Started Basic then click the parameter file, which has the extension .xyf. We have two icons next to the folder icon. The glasses icon means read, and the pencil icon means write. With the parameter file selected in the field, read will read the parameters from the file into this panel, and write will write the current panel entries into the file that's selected. So we want to select read, so click the glasses, and you'll see now from reading in the parameter file that in the format tab, the column information has been filled out. So we have point ID in column number one, X coordinate in column number two, and so on for all the columns in our data file. The basic tab has also had some fields updated. We just need to pick a default text style. So I'll select the text icon and pick text 2.5 millimeters. Now sometimes the first row of the data file will contain a descriptor of what each column of data is. 
So it will actually say point ID, then X coordinate, Y coordinate, and so on. But we don't have that in our file. So I'll untick the skip column headers tick box. And then I'll go back into the map file tab. And you can see a map file has been filled out in the field. Uh, to open this map file, I'll select the folder icon and select open. Now most of the work of the map file is done through the basic node. So what's happening here is that in this first column, the key column, we have the key that the surveyor picks up the site features with. Then in the name, model, color, point line and line style columns, these are the properties that we are going to apply to any features that have been picked up with the corresponding key name in that row. This will avoid the data being imported with a model the same as the surveyor key. Because for example, RDRC doesn't mean much to us, we'd much rather have that data in the model road. I'll close this map file. And lastly, this pre asterisk postfix for models of survey space asterisk will mean the data will be imported onto the model lowercase survey, then the name of the model in the map file. So lowercase survey road, as opposed to just road. The obvious benefit to naming the survey models in this way is that when we go to pick a model, we'll easily be able to see that the model originated from the survey data because it has that survey prefix. The less obvious benefit has to do with where the model will sit within the model list. Models that start with a capital letter sit above those that start with a lowercase letter. So these survey models will sit toward the bottom of the model list. This is what we prefer because we're not going to be selecting these survey models all that often. So we don't want to have to scroll through all these survey models to select a model that we'll need to be selecting more often. Uh, in a future video, when we get some more models in the project, I'll draw your attention to where this comes up. We'll just go back to the basic tab quickly. Any data which has been picked up with the surveyor key that is not in the map file will be added to the model unknown. So we have to check this after our import. So now select read on this panel to read the data in. You'll see a plan view called data import has been created and all of the models which have just been imported into the project have been automatically added to this view. So there's all our data. I'll select finish on this panel. And to see exactly which models were imported into the project, select the minus icon on the plan data import toolbar. And you can see the models there with that lowercase survey prefix. Now, if we were to import more data into this project, all these models would be removed from the data import view and the models imported by that second import would then be added to this view, which is why we shouldn't conduct any sort of design work within this data import view. Instead, we'll add these models to the plan survey view and continue from there. So bring up the survey view by clicking the heading or down in the view tabs. I'll fix this view to the top left of the view space. Then select the plus icon on the plan view toolbar. Now we have all the survey models here and we also have the model unknown, which contains any data which hasn't mapped correctly. Let's just add this unknown model to the view first and then select the icon to the right of the minus icon, which is view fit, which will size the viewport to the data on in the view. When we click that view fit icon, nothing changes in the view, which means there is no data in that model. This means that all the data has mapped correctly, which is good. So I'll reselect the plus icon and add the survey models to the view. I'll left click and hold and drag and then select add. Then again, select the view fit and our data is now in the plan survey view. The next step in the process is going to be to create our existing surface. 